And in this tutorial, I want to show you a little bit more about working with labels and uh, working with text in this case. Um, and to quickly demonstrate a few of the features in the Label Designer software application, I want to remind you really quickly that this is a drag and drop software application. And that means as we add items like text, a new text field up here, as we move this around, you can see that it's dragging in. And then when we put it in place, that's the idea to drop. So that's what that drag and drop text and images means. Around this text field is a bounding box with a little white X. If I hit this X, I destroy that text field. But I can quickly come down here to the New Text button. And as you can see, I've got this new text field. And also give you a few other little rules to remember when you're dealing with um, a font faces, um, which is the different styles of fonts that we have available and a placement of these text fields in a generally square label format like you see here. Now, really quickly, I want to demonstrate just to show you. I'm going to create a few quick text fields here. And then I'm going to write something in each one of them. Um, we're just going to say greetings in this line. And we'll, in this line, we'll say uh, Mark and April. And then from your friends at Hervino. Okay. And with this greetings, I'm going to go ahead and make this much bigger. Say 35 point. Mark and April, again, I'll also make that bigger. And then let's go ahead and center our text. Uh, first of all, remember we have the show centering guides, and that can help us to just visually use these. They're kind of a uh, cyan colored line there that we can use these to uh, visually place our text lines. Or we can also use the centering command down here. Remember, this is always available to help you center text and images horizontally. Okay, so here we go. And that just snapped into place. You can see that visually with my eye, I got us pretty close. But let's move it over here and you'll see it in action. Watch this. Snaps it right into place. Something to remember about when you're dealing with the centering button is these bounding boxes can be deceiving. And depending on the font face you're using, the centering function does not always operate exactly on center. Um, that's something to be careful of. If you are having trouble centering something, you can always turn this button off and just use the drag and drop feature and move it back and forth and watch the guides. See these green guides here that are going on either direction here. And look at your edges and you can visually just place it and get pretty close. And now watch, when I hit the centering button, you'll see how, how close I was. See that? I was very close. And I'm also going to use the rule of thirds here, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. But this is just to demonstrate. I'm going to turn off the centering guides and look at, look at our, our new label. We have this reset label button. So if you find yourself kind of getting frustrated with the process and you're maybe not happy with what you've written or the styles you've used for the fonts, just come over here and hit reset label. You'll get a quick JavaScript pop-up that asks you, are you sure you want to do this? In this case, yes. And as you can see, we're back to how the label template started. And just to hammer that home a little further, I'm going to go ahead and go back and show you that the Andalusia label template is already designed with this happy anniversary mom and dad text, love Carrie, Brad, and Sarah. And when we click on it, there we are. So we really don't have an undo button per se, but we can always reset the label or we can go back to our label template category area here, this uh, browse and select template page, and we can start over if we have to. So I want to go into a little bit more on dealing with text. There's some things that I wanted to make you aware of, bring to your attention, and that is that these different text fonts behave differently uh, depending on which font face you select. There are some things about the application that aren't quite perfect, and one of them is, is that you can actually make some of these text lines too big for the template and cause problems for yourself. Um, one of the things we notice is, is that if this white bounding box that's going around a text field gets too big and goes beyond a certain, area, a certain area out here on the edge of the label design preview window, you may run into issues where the centering functionality and other problems arise. So I'm going to show that to you really quickly with this line of text, Happy Anniversary. Over here is the size selector and this is all really in points and if you've ever worked with Microsoft Word or Photoshop any uh, program that publisher any program that you deal with text and images 
Um, you've seen these font selectors. It's, it's pretty common to start with a font that's like the size of 12 point in something like typing up a letter in Microsoft Word. Um, this selection is at 36 as we can see. And if I start to go up into this area of, let's go to about 50, let me show you what happens. As you can see, I can no longer really center this text. This line of text is just too big for our template at 50. And every font's a little different. For instance, if I switch this font right now to, let's go to, I'll show you one that works, Playbill. Now see, at the size 50, Playbill still works within the parameters, and we're allowed to move this font, this line of text, backwards and forwards here horizontally. And we can move it, of course, up and down. But the point I'm making is, is that different font faces are going to react differently as you size them. Uh, one in particular to be careful of, this is a very hard uh, font to work with when you're trying to center it. Uh, it's not the end of the world, it's not uh, something you want to avoid, but I just want to make it known to you that um, when you're dealing with the Edwardian script and some of these script fonts, they don't exactly center easily. As you can see, the bounding box is already overscaling, and that's the nature of how this font was designed by the original designer. It just doesn't space the same evenly as it goes across. And so when you're working with it, you have to be kind of careful about using centering. For instance, if I turn on my centering guides, and I just kind of visually center it, watch what happens if I hit the centering button. You can see that it is now, the edge of this D is going way outside to the right of our centering guides. Whereas the M is starting over here on the edge, and that's because the font is generally being centered, this line of text, excuse me, is being centered by more of this edge of the bounding box than it is the actual edge of the font. So you want to be kind of careful when you're working with some of these different font faces, these lines of text. See, when it's in center mode, I can't move it horizontally right to left. I'm, drag I'm clicking and dragging, but nothing's happening. I can still move it up and down, but I cannot move it right to left. I'll turn off centering, and then I'll have to visually, with these script fonts, kind of use my eyes and the guides. I'm looking at this D, and I'm looking at this curl, this ornament coming off this M. And that's just something to be careful of when you're dealing with different font faces. The blockier fonts, I hit the centering there, and you can see that we're pretty close. That H is maybe a little bit, a little bit in on this uh, guideline than the Y is coming out a little further than the guideline. But it still seems pretty good to my eyes. Like if I turn off my centering guides, there we go. So that's pretty easy to work with and something I wouldn't uh, let that bother you too much if you can't use centering. Just turn it off. Use your eyes. Rely on your instincts. Look at the difference between the edge of the letter and the edge of the border here. And you'll get yourself in, in centered pretty well. And what we'll do on our end, uh, before we go to production, if we see something slip off way over here like this, we will come in and intentionally center your lettering. Uh, it's just very rare that we're going to anticipate someone designing a label that looks like that. We would more anticipate that if you bothered to center these other two lines of text, you probably want this main heading here to be centered as well. So we'll take care of that for you, so don't sweat the small stuff. Now I want to talk to you about font face selection. And this is kind of an important rule in graphic design. Uh, that when you're coming in and doing this yourself, maybe designing a label for the first time or a greeting card, something of that nature, and you haven't done a lot of typesetting and layout, there's a few little rules that designers use to just help them stay within the realm of creating something that's acceptable and will be generally more popular to different viewers. So what I'm referring to there is, uh, unless you really want to set out with something that's extremely radical in your design, which could happen. Maybe you want text up here and you want text over there, and you do intend to do something kind of radical like that. Generally, folks are looking to keep, this is kind of a classy item. It's an elegant bottle of wine with a personal label, and they generally want to stay within this kind of formal nature of the design.